Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba'da ayyul habita fillah. Continue on. <coughs> this is the second sitting in our brief summary and brief study of Imam Al-Mujadid Muqbil bin Hadi Al-Wadi'i Allahi Ramahu his very very short treatise called Hadahi Da'watana wa Aqidatana this is our call and this is our creed so if you want to know the creed of the Salafis you want to know the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah you want to know my creed it's contained in the book that we're about to uh, this very short brief treatise that we will go over and bring a lot of benefits from some of one of his students who explained it. So we mentioned the Sheikh <coughs> was raised in a Shia environment and that was what had affected him and impacted him as a young boy but he always had a love for knowledge. وَكَانَ الشَّيْخِ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ يَقُولُ كُنْتُ مُحَبِّنْ لِطَالَبِ الْعِلْمِ مُنْذُ كُنْتُ صَغِيرًا the Shaykh said, he used to say, Rahmatullah that he used he was uh, he always had a love and a passion for seeking knowledge, even from the time that he was a child. And then uh, in his story it mentions that he went to Mecca uh, for work when he became uh, older. And that's where he began to understand the correct Aqidah and creed. He was working in Mecca as a doorman, basically, or a, a security guard, you could say. And someone had, you know, I believe he had asked for some books, and someone had told him, you know, and he said, I want to buy, you know, because he loved to read, I want to buy some beneficial books, you know, Islamic books. So they recommended for him to get Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, Bulugh al-Maram, Riyadh al-Salihin, Fatah al-Majid, which is the explanation of Kitab al one of the explanations. And they actually gave him these things for free. And also what the Saudis used to teach or teach in their schools regarding Tawheed. And so he would read tremendously and this had a major impact on him and stayed with him and stayed in his head and he began to reflect about the things that he saw in his country where he was from so after some time he returned to Yemen and then he began to deny or negate those things which he saw, which differed from what he was reading. From the books, things like uh, what was prevalent is people sacrificed to other than Allah. They used to build big domes over the graves. Um, and the Shia heard about this. And they began to, you know, be very harsh with him and to uh, try to persuade him to get right. And then one from them said, narrating the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu but of course out of context, he said, Men faqtuluhu. Whoever changes his religion, then kill him. This is what the Shia said to him. So they were threatening him because they're saying, hey, you have come with this fitna, this new Wahhabi stuff. They also said, another one said to him, وَآخَرْ يُرْسِلُ إِلَيَّ أَقْرَبَائِي وَيَقُولْ إِنْ إِنْ لَمْ تَمْنَعُهُ فَنَسْجِنُهُ فَنَسْجِنُهُ وَبَعْدَ ذَلَكَ قَرَرُوا أَنْ يُدْخُلُنِي يُدْخُلُنِي جَعْمِ الْحَادِي مِنْ أَجْلِ دَرَسَ عِنْدُهُمْ لِإِزَالَةُ شُبَهَاتِ الَّتِي عَقَلْتُ بِقَلْبِي So the Shaykh Another one of the, some of the other ones, they came to his relatives. And they said, 
stop him from teaching and stop him from this, uh, you know, this wicked ideology. And uh, if you don't prevent him, we're going to throw him in jail. So then after that, they had agreed, they came together, they agreed that he would enter into their, uh, their uh, a big masjid there, uh, Jam al Hadi, where probably the Shia taught, taught their, you know, maybe they were Zaydiya Shia, I believe. And they, you know, taught their, taught religion, you know, the Quran, and they taught their religious studies. So his relatives agreed, and they, they put him there, and they said they did this in order to remove the doubtful things from him, meaning the, the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah. So the Shaykh used to conceal his Aqid at this time. But what he benefited there is he benefited by studying grammar, a very famous book and grammar called Qatar al -Nada. And he studied it many times with a Shaykh named Ismail Hatava. <clears throat> and then when Yemen was going through uh, a revolution, like many of the Yemenis, uh, some of the, especially from that area, they fled and went to Najran in, Sa in Saudi, which is in the south of Saudi Arabia. He stayed there for some time. And he was studying Quran there in a tahfi, the Quran. But then he felt the urge to go back to Mecca, you know, and he was really uh, determined to do that and to go and study. And whatever work he could find would be sufficient. So he, he, he went to Mecca, he found some work, and he studied with a sheikh named Sheikh Yahya ibn Uthman al-Pakistani, a Pakistani sheikh in Alam, uh, named Sheikh Yahya ibn Uthman and he studied ibn uh, Tafsir ibn Kathir with him and Bukhari and Muslim and then in his other free time he would you know go through books and uh, like do research research in the books then they open which is very a, a very famous place which is called Mahara Haram in Mecca and they have one in Medina as well I had a chance to do a year in Mahara Haram in, in Medina, which is in the Prophet Sallallahu his masjid. The Shaykh went to Mahara Haram and he did well on the exam and he succeeded and then 